Now that we've gone ahead and patched our lights, let's go ahead and build some groups. At the top of our Onyx screen here, we have our fixture and group window. It's a combo window that has different panes with fixtures and groups, though there is an only group window as well. In our first window, we see all of our fixtures right here, and there's a few ways we can select them. First, we'll just press on the tiles to select some lights. I'll also turn on highlight so that we can see what fixtures we have selected. Perfect. Now, we'll go over to the groups, press record, press the group tile we want to record to, and it's saved. Last, right after recording, we can type a name for our group. Of course, if you mess up the group name or you forget to name it until later, you can always just tap on the group tile, type away, and rename it. Not a problem at all. Let's go build our next group. In Onyx, to clear, clear once will clear out our fixture selection. Clearing twice is a full programming clear. Back to the fixtures tab, we'll identify our next fixture that we want to work with. Scrolling down here. I'm going to bring in 51 through 56. And now we get these strip lights that are on the floor. Perfect. Now, when we're dealing with a multi-part fixture, uh, we have multiple cells of LEDs in these fixtures, and we need to work with them separately so that colors, presets, and effects apply correctly. So in this case, we have two options at the top of our screen, slice and range. And we can toggle between them at the top of the fixture and group window. So if I clear here, and I now type, while in slice mode, 51.0 through 56.0, enter. I get, as it shows in the, in the graphic, just the point zero part. Now, when we're working with multi-part fixtures, and th these days they've become much more common than they were before, we have a master, which is going to have any master control, such as intensity of the whole fixture, pan tilt if it's a moving head, uh, maybe color settings, macros, things like that. Whereas the parts, the cells of the fixture, will have probably just red, green, blue, and whatever other color of LEDs are in this particular fixture. So I want to store the masters and the parts separately in a group because ultimately I work with them separately. Now I'll press record group two enter. My second group has been recorded. It's right there in the groups tab. I'll rename it in a couple minutes. For now, let's go ahead and look at another slice and range example while we're here. So I'm in slice. If I go to range and I type in 51.1 through 56.4, enter. Then what I get if I'm in range mode, is it, I get starting where I started at 51.1, all the way through, masters, sub, sub fixtures, everything. It's kind of a mess. Um, so when you use range on a multi-part fixture, it's going to go through the range of those fixtures. So when we're making groups for a multi-part, keep it in slice, and then our 51.1 through 56. Dot, we'll look and see how many parts there are. Eight. Enter. Gets us only those sub fixtures, not the master fixture, just the parts. Record group three. Enter. And it's on the groups page. We could also switch screens and, and record to the group tile, but this saves time. Go ahead and clear. And I want to make one more group for our darts. Our darts 360s are 71 through 76 plus. 81 through 86. Perfect. We also could have typed, because there's no fixtures in between, 71 through 86. Because there's nothing in that gap of 77 through 80. Now I'll go ahead and rest, press record. Go to my groups tab. You'll notice if you've used other consoles, 
Sometimes in other consoles, when you switch tabs or windows while in active record mode, you might record a screen view or change a layout. In Onyx, that's not the case. You're just taken to the window, and you're not recording over the view. You still have the opportunity to record your group. Great. We give the darts a name. When we're selecting multiple groups, just like fixtures, we can select and deselect between multiple groups or fixtures. So we see here that that's the parts of the strip lights. Those are the masters. So we'll label them as so. Again, labeling an existing group is as easy as tapping on it, typing it, and you're good to go. You can rename them whenever you want. It's no problem. Now, when it comes to group, we've got a few other things that can really help us. One of those is the grouping tools. They're right here at the top of the groups window. If I select my darts, and then I go to the grouping tools, we have some different options here to make some dynamic selections of our lights. So if I go every two, now every other fixture is selected. Increase the value to three every third. Similarly, we can select a block. That's another option. A block of six, maybe. And whichever type we have selected, we can use the last and next keys on the console to cycle through the entire selection. So we have 12 fixtures selected, but only six are active because of the grouping tools filter. This makes it really easy, all within one group, to have multiple selections to be able to apply other attributes to later. We're going to go ahead now, and I'm going to do an every two. I'm going to record it in a group. Now I see in my new group that it has the E2 filter in the upper right hand corner. This signals me to show that this group has an every two filter applied and that when I select it, the lights will be in the every two selection, just like this. If we misplaced any groups while we were recording, we can move groups around however we need. All we do is just press move, press the group, press where we'd like it to move to. Copy works the same way. And then delete, press that old one we want to get rid of, press enter, confirm it, and it goes away for good. Awesome. Now we've created our first few groups. It's time to dive in and get in further with our programming. Let's head to the next video.